So the next video I wanted to do, I kind of wanted to, I mean, my clumsiness, I, I rewatched the video and I said I couldn't take my hockey stick and slap the ice. And I meant to say slap the puck. And no, I couldn't slap the ice either. That's how clumsy I was. That was perfect, man. That made me laugh. Anyway, I want to talk about uh, my caregiving, man. I got stories, pool stories. I got caregiving stories. I got, you know, just my whole life is a story. Um, it would have been, I was still living at my mom's and I lived at my mom's up till 2016. So I was working as a caregiver for Home Instead. I started there uh, September of 2015, came back from my cruise and that was a, I, I went and applied for it and got hired by Home, Home Instead. And uh, I, you know, to pat my own back, you know, I'm, I'm working there, you know, I'm, I'm going to go into my home, my caregiving story about that. But uh I've been working there a month. God, my Sunday was a 19-hour day, but it got, boom, half my week is is worked. I mean, it was great, but it was a brutal shift. It was from like 1 o'clock, you know, um, Sunday afternoon till 7 o'clock Monday morning. And uh, Jim McKay, Jim and Josephine McKay was this old Irish couple. <clears throat> and he was an airline, I'm sorry, an aircraft mechanic. And he... Uh, you know, traveled around the world with, I, I mean, he, they were from um, Ireland, you know, and so probably, you know, British Airways or something. I mean, they, he, they, she talked about they were in Saudi Arabia, they were in Australia, they were, you know, I mean, here they are in America. They, I mean, you know, and uh, they were probably, they were probably in their mid 80s, both of them. And um, a, a year or two before I'd, I'd started taking care of them, um, Jim had had a massive stroke and it wiped out like the right half of his body. And he, you know, at the time, I probably weighed about 160 pounds, and he probably weighed about 210. You know, I mean, he was, you had to help him onto the toilet, and he could only use one side, and he wouldn't help you. And it was, you know, a mess. Anyway, um, I mean, they, you know, I was taking care of them. Um, and then I was taking care of my my favorite client of all time, um, Pete Blanchard in, in Port Angeles. Um, he was a retired uh uh, U.S. Forest Service worker, I mean, guy, you know, and uh, he had uh, Louis bodies and Parkinson's, and man, it it it, it get bad. I I I'd, I'd go do um, the graveyard shift so his wife could get a night's sleep. I mean, it just, it, you know, she had to, you know, go in there it was from ten o'clock, you know, ten thirty till about, you know, eight the next morning. Man, she was sleeping, and you know, I was taking care of, and he was up and down and to the bathroom, three a.m. shuffle the bathroom, and he we always had some snack that she had prepared. I mean, I could be just, you know, I I loved um toasted wheat um cereal i love i mean she just would you know she'd go what do you like and then she'd, she'd have it for us and it was kind of cool and uh pete blanchard you know he i i wish i could have trailed him around in his in his trek across these olympic peninsula because he had from like the pacific ocean to um what was it quilcine or something you know um you get to the hood canal you know that waterway that's that's where he was you know and where he was trekking and where he i mean he he goes john there's some great fishing up there you know i'll go man you come across any hot springs he goes oh yeah you know you don't tell anybody because <laughs> you know it's like god oh, man i would have loved to be with pete blanchard <clears throat> but to pat my back um you know i'm working there and you know, every once in a while, I'll talk to the owners, and it was really weird because I never run into fellow employees, because except the one I'm taking over for is taking over for me, and they tell me that I am handling, you know, their Squim Home Instead Senior Care. I am ha handling their two toughest clients, you know, and it's I'm, you know, I'm just doing my thing, and I'm just I take care of people. It's you know, caregiving is the only job I ever walked into where. You know, I had to learn the procedures of the business side and keeping track hours and all that stuff. But to go in there and actually be a caregiver and take care of somebody, it's the only job I've ever walked into where I didn't need, you know, anybody to tell me, anybody to tell me what to do. I knew what to do. You know, and I just, you know, and you be around people enough, you get in tune with them. And that's, you know, kind of my gift. Okay, so I'm taking care of Pete Blanchard out in Port Angeles. Um, I'm still living with my mom. So I'm driving back to Squim. Um, it's... It's really weird when you go into Port Angeles, it's like it's like 15 minutes to Port Angeles, but to go anywhere in Port Angeles, it's like half an hour. I mean, it, it just is, if you look at it on a map, it, I mean, it, I, I, you know, you have to drive it to really believe me that that's the way it is. It's, it's really stupid the way it's all laid out and stuff, but, you know, that's just the way it is. So it was probably, I want to say it was late January, early February of 2016, and um, I'm coming home. I have my Chevy S10 Blazer. 
Um, I, I, at that time of year, you know, it was freezing. It was not freezing, you know, so I'm checking the weather before I leave Port Angeles. It was 35 degrees and, um, a heavy mist coming down was what was coming down. So the roads were wet. So I'm coming back down, um, back to, to squim at, um, I want to say, you know, probably I get off at six. So it's probably, you know, about six twenty. you know, I'm, um, at, uh, Bard road heading East and, up ahead i'm in the left lane and the you know the road's wet but it's been okay you know it's probably about i don't know that's probably about four or five miles from port angeles and it's been okay and you know i come over this rise and up ahead about i don't know four or five hundred yards is a um state trooper here and they have these bizarre lights they, they should be illegal it's just so blinding what you know and he's got them on and i'm you know we all we all speed through there it's 55 and we're doing 60 65 we all do you know and you, you're doing 55 people are passing that just is the way it is and i you know i'm probably doing 55 you know thinking it's okay and i saw the lights and i and i slowed down i don't think i hit my brakes but i slowed down and i hit the black ice I, I go into the guardrail, you know, um, my whole, my whole car just shifts sideways. I didn't go into the guardrail, but just shift sideways. I, I creamed down the guardrail, like maybe five feet, came back like an idiot. I, I hit my brakes and I see ahead um, why I hit my brakes. I see ahead. There's the, the, the trooper and in front of him about, I don't know, you know, 30, 40 feet is this lady that flipped over in like one of those Buick Siegel, that size car. And I mean, she, she's out. I mean, well, I'll get to that part. And so I'm going, oh my God, I creamed off this. I come back, I hit my brakes. I go, I'm going to hit this cop. I, I know that he's, you know, I didn't see him yet. I didn't, I didn't know that he was with her, but I'm going, I'm going to kill a cop. I'm, I'm, you know, this is like, it's, you know, he's, and there's his car. If I don't kill him, I'm going to hit his car. And I, you know, like an idiot hit my hit my brake slammed them on you know we're sliding now did a 270 um i i went over to the right lane there's two lanes i went over the right lane um i went into the into the um, side of the road and then you know did a did a 270 flip so i was facing diagonally back the way i was come opposite you know and I stuck in the mud. I, my feet, my, my tires were buried, you know, a foot and a half in the mud. I, I just, you know, four wheel drive and that, uh, that four wheel drive low, it just, it, it couldn't pull me out. And, uh, so I'm sitting there, you know, and I, I get out and I go talk to the, to the trooper and I go, man, do you need anything? He goes, yeah, just put your lights on your, your hazards on. And so I'm going, okay. And, um, you know, she, he's sitting there talking to her. She's on the ground, man, just on her, you know, kneeling down and just on her, but you know, just like she was scared. I could tell, I mean, she that had been a traumatic experience. I mean, she flipped upside down. And so I'm sitting there in my car and this lady in a, like a Toyota four runner, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I ended up probably 20 yards from that, that officer's car. And this lady, I don't know how she did it. She lost control, slammed on her brakes, and, and she ended up going straight into the ditch. I mean, it, it just slammed right into the ditch, right between us. I mean, exactly between us. And uh, I, I don't remember all the other cars, but I mean, okay, it was like finally you know, maybe three or four more cars, you know, three cars had, had, you know, spun out or done something, hit another car, whatever. And, you know, so there's like five of us and they finally close the freeway. They finally get officers there. They finally get, you know, I mean, where um, the EMTs are there and it's just, you know, they're all, all, you know, these, I don't know, 10 cars right in the right hand lane. People are going through on the left hand lane. They're letting people through and didn't close it yet. And, I, I swear to God, um, I got out of my, my car, my truck, and um, we, I went up the embankment up past the ditch, and there was other people, you know, and, you know, we're, we're sitting there, and you, you would hear the car, the tires lock up, you'd hear the screech, you'd hear the, you know, it would slam into something. I mean, the cars, the emergency, you know, the, the ambulances got hit, the police car got hit, it was, you know, other people got hit, and, I mean... It was funny because we're, I'm standing by my, my blazer and, you know, we hear that sound again. And I look down and all the lights and stuff, you can see there was like 47 of us running up the embankment to try and get away because we had no idea where the next one was coming. Man, that, that, you know, 
when all was said and done, um, it was interesting because I'm, you know, trying to get towed out of there and, and you just, I called some people and they weren't, they wouldn't let people through. And then, so one of the tow trucks that they had called to get people, you know, moving or out of the way, um, he, the police officer, um, said, uh, I got a story about the police officer. It's, it's cool. Um, he said, man, can you, can you tow this guy out? And when I'd worked at O'Reilly's, the, the tow driver had been one of the regulars for Eric's towing and he'd come in and I'd helped him. And, you know, he goes, yeah, man, no problem. And I, I think I had 25 bucks in my pocket and I gave it to him. I said, man, if I ever see you again, I'll, you know, he, he, he towed me right out, you know, he goes, put it in four wheel low and just a little bit of gas. And he pulled me and popped me right out. And I was the only one that drive away, away drove away from that from that whole thing that morning. I mean, that I was, I mean, it was funny because they had the road closed off and down, I mean, a quarter mile down or so, there's other officers and stuff and I'm driving down and they're looking at me. I mean, they're looking at me like, what, you know, how did you get through or whatever, you know, and they finally opened the road again later when it melted and, you know, black ice, man, I, 35 degrees. When I left Port Angeles, I probably went up in elevation in the road, 300 feet, you know, maybe, you know, 500 feet I did you know who, who knows and you know it was that much of a difference that you know to bring it down to 32 degrees and, and it froze it okay so that officer that trooper um you know I I had to get my um my boat trailer I had, I had just a boat trailer I had to get it licensed and so I had to take it into the troopers between here and Port Angeles to get it inspected I had to get it weighed and inspected and uh, go in there and he the officer is behind the counter and I, I got to tell him, I got to say, Hey man, when I came over that hill and I saw your lights, I took my, my foot off the, the gas enough to, you know, where I slowed down 45 miles an hour, maybe when I hit that guardrail, I said, you saved me, man. I mean, your light saved me. I mean, I was like, I, you know, thank you very much. You know, and he's just like, yeah, just, you know, part of my job, you know, just doing my job, man. No, that's not what he said, but you know, it was part of his job. And I thought, you know, that was cool, man. You know, just, ah, uh, man, that was, that was, that was, a you know, all part of the journey. Anyway, guys, many blessings.